So we've just learned about some old Chinese traditions told to us by the wonderful, amazingly gracious Fei Leung. Oh, she reminds me of Queen Elizabeth. What a, what a, a movie star, a glamorous lady. We're getting into some even more ancient traditions right now. There's a legend about the snake, you know, the legend of the white snake, also known as Madame Snake, because the snake can actually transform itself into a human form. And we're going to learn some more about that throughout the year as we're going to be following the snake through. For now, we're going to see the snake dancing, uh, showing itself for the first time to the general public in what used to be called Tinseltown. It's now called the International Village Mall. And uh, we filmed there just recently. The snake landing is quite something. Tell me about how long it took you to put it together. Um, maybe we started dreaming about it in the summer mm -hmm. and collecting materials and started really working on it in November. And then in December, everybody got together and it was actually really cool. And who is we? How many people did it take to put it together? Um, the community arts council of Vancouver was the one who commissioned the lantern. So I did the kind of framework, and then on December 11th, uh, it was a public community art event. It was about 30 people came, and they helped weave stuff into the materials of the snake. And while we worked on the snake, we got to listen to the snake poems, snake readings, and snake legends. And all of it, of course, because this is the year of the snake. So for people who couldn't see it at home, just describe for me what it looks like. I was trying to gauge how long it is. I don't really know how long it is because it's kind of like a giant slinky, so it's so flexible, but let's say 14 to 15 feet. Mm -hmm. um, the head is a bamboo frame, so I get little bamboo lines, and I use thin pieces of bamboo to fill out a head shape and tails as well. And the head and tail are covered in lunaria, which is also the name of the snake. Lunaria is the, the plant also called silver dollar yeah. for honesty. Um, so I took all the dried seed pods for the and I moved those on one by one. And you're making the rounds here at uh, Lunar New Year celebrations, also the Sunday Sun Garden. So where else are, could people see this if they want to have a quick look at it? On Sunday, on the 10th, it's going to be on Gravel Island from 11 a.m. to noon. And it's going to be in the Chinese New Year Parade on the 17th. Jackie, thank you so much, and thanks for sharing it with us today. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Jackie Rolston, a Vancouver artist. Her snake lantern is a project of the Community Arts Council. We're hearing right now comes from the Vancouver Chinese Music Ensemble, directed by Jerome Fong. Uh, what you can see at home right now is the stunning snake lantern that's on stage with us at the moment, moving along with that music just below the stage, in fact. Much more music to come on the program from Chris Ho. He's a singer-songwriter based in Victoria. If you listen to this show regularly, you will know that we are big fans of his. As well as celebrating the Lunar New Year this afternoon, we're going to be digging into the history of Chinatown and looking at what the future might hold for this neighborhood. Like Happy the New Year! Store, this neighborhood is facing a lot of pressure from development, and that is affecting people who live here. In addition, we are seeing more and more of the longtime family-run businesses close their doors, with some being replaced by shops and services not traditionally associated with the neighborhood. This hour, Julie Lynn Maxwell will be our guest. She's an educator and historian who was good enough to tour me through the neighborhood earlier this week. We've got a panel of guests to talk about the changing face of Chinatown. We are here until 6 o'clock this afternoon. We would love you to come here and see us at the International Village Hall at Pendering. It was really wonderful seeing the Lunaria, the white lantern paper snake, as it slithered and danced its way around Tinseltown. Next up, we have an interview with Hendrik Bune and Scott Clark and Luan Ike Nikweke Neil, and they'll be talking about Idle No More and the artistic practices that are coming out in support of this nationally growing and internationally growing Aboriginal movement. Welcome back. With me today are Scott Clark, founder and executive director of Alive, and Duan Ikiwega of the Kwak Youth People. And we're going to be talking about the Idol No More movement. So my first question is to Duan. Uh, what forms of art are traditionally used in your culture? Well, we actually have a whole gamut of the arts disciplines, um, storytelling being the major one. 
uh, traditional carving, which falls under visual arts, mm. weaving, drum making, that sort of thing, mm. uh, music, song, and dance. Excellent. I just learned your language and I forgot your last name, which is Neil. So we'll fit that one in. I was so proud of myself being able to pronounce this Ikiawega. <laughs> she tried it sometime. Beautiful name. Um, what would be your role or the role of the artist in general in the I Don't Know More movement? I think we have a really important role in just conveying to all Canadians visually and, th and through the arts mm -hmm. this message about I Don't Know More, about protecting the environment and keeping Canada environmentally clean and um, for future generations, really. And perhaps, Scott, maybe you can fill us in on the politics behind that. You're an organizer in the local community. Yeah, so what it, kind of events are well, we building up around uh, that? There's a lot going on around I Don't Know More, and it, it's a movement that's growing. Uh, it's bringing in many different factors uh, or sectors in the indigenous community and in the environmental community, the gay, lesbian, all the different groups, the Palestinians, all these groups that are are rallying around the basic fundamental human rights and one thing that's really powerful in this movement as it's as it's evolving is we're seeing a lot of the young people come out a lot of the women come out with their with their drums with their songs with their regalia and really leading the way and opening the doors for all other peoples and cultures to come forward and say listen we all care about the environment we all care about the basic fundamental human rights of all people and future generations exactly. but, but in addition to that it's not just that it's about wait a sec as a Canadian, um, they recognize they're treated people, just as some of us are treated or some of us are not treated. And so they want to see their government honor treaties, honor their constitution, and negotiate fairly and equitably with, with uh, Indigenous peoples before they do anything that violates uh, the territories, the lands, the resources, the, the livelihoods of That's a of huge movement then, really. And it's the young people and the artists that are bringing it to life in, in social media or in the streets or be it the Oprah Winfrey show they just had here in Vancouver that, that uh, Luann organized. At, uh, yeah. Is it a round dance or flash mob? Or? Yeah, can you tell me something, something about that? It was actually in conjunction with uh, Kat Norris and the uh, candlelight vigil that was held for missing and murdered women. Yeah, yeah, we I brought our events good. together and had a round dance outside of Rogers Arena when uh, Oprah Winfrey was here. Fantastic. It was just to And really did Oprah get to know about that? Um, we're not sure. We were messaging her for weeks ahead of time to uh -huh. see if we could get her acknowledgement of it, but we were there nonetheless in the crowds. That's what we were after, was to really draw attention to the crowd that was there. I was actually following Luann's uh, Facebook pages. She's actually trying to get uh, tea with uh, uh, <laughs> Oprah and give her a t-shirt. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> a tea to give her a tea. You know, Oprah, Oprah is pretty, pretty big. She's pretty influential too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I hope they show a little bit of that, at least, uh, you know, like um, before or after the show, or uh, you know, like maybe dedicate a show to it. Because I don't know, mm -hmm. I don't know more. It's uh, really grown as a movement, right? Well, it's grown, and but it's sort of right now. Now that Chief Spence, who actually came after the I don't know more started, you know, she sort of stopped her her fast, and then the chiefs have been meeting. And it's sort of like we're in this sort of limbo land, mm -hmm. if you will. Mm -hmm. But it's been followed in Europe, like I have around the world. Mm -hmm. I have activist friends in the Netherlands, yeah, and it's on the Facebook it's, page. It's all around the world. The time. But the big question for the I don't know more organizers, and there's hundreds of them across the country, and I would suggest uh, around the world, is where do we go from here? Mm -hmm. And that's the big question. Well, this leads me up to my next question: uh, How do you revive your traditional culture in the new urban context? Well, I think that there's lots of different approaches we can take. I know my effort has been really through the arts. I'm a full-time student at Emily Carr. We have almost 70 Aboriginal students there. Mm -hmm. And so what I can do while I'm there is to inform the student population about what Idle No More is about. It's a lot about history. Uh, I became aware that lots of our young people don't even know what the Indian Act is. Mm -hmm. So it's really informing people, getting them aware of the issues and really how it affects all of us mm -hmm. as Canadians. And what a coincidence too that you're doing this at the Emily Carr Institute because she was one of the few British women who really went out into right, the native yeah. culture and, and got the spirit of it all. Mm -hmm. It's very so, fitting, it's very yeah. fitting. Um, can you tell me something about how, so how social media plays a role in I don't know more, Scott or Luan, either of you? I think social media plays a massive role in it because I'll give you a small example. Uh, only a couple nights ago I got a, a message from someone at 11 o'clock at night 
11.30 saying, oh, Prime Minister Harper is going to be at such and such location. So I immediately sent that out on Facebook to a number of people. The young people picked that up, and at 9.30 the next morning, so less than 10 hours, they started to get a whole bunch of young people out there doing the Idle No More movement the other day. And then all day people showed up. So social media is a really powerful tool, and the young people are really using that as an instrument to, to mobilize, educate, and, and get more people engaged. Yeah. I'm with a social media group called AHA Media, and uh, one of our reporters tried to get in to see Harper, but no way. They oh, so you were out there then? Closely guarded. Oh. Not me, it was Richard. Okay, cool. Richard's doing camera work here. Um, no, that's interesting. Um, so yeah, definitely social media takes, it takes a huge role uh, for in communication right now. Yeah, so fast, right? Do you use Twitter? Do you use Facebook? Well, I, I'm not that technologically yeah. advanced yet, but I'm, no. I, I, it's a course I'm taking next week. Yeah, I don't do that. Do you do Twitter? I just started last Did week you? myself, yeah. In my view, <laughs> it'll be a few years and we'll all be sitting in a tree tweeting at each other and not doing anything else. Well, they say it's good. Now I gotta, I'll figure that out. But no, seriously, I mean, you look at it, and I use social media a lot, and I, and, and I read Luann's page and other people's pages all the time, mm -hmm. and you see the young artists coming up, they're doing their videos, their music, they're taking video footage of wherever they're going, and they're putting that there. And what we're seeing, at least what I'm seeing, I think a lot of others are seeing, is the social media artists are picking up on this, and they're making videos and stuff mm -hmm. like that and putting it out there. Mm -hmm. So it's really cool because it helps to educate uh, that whole other generation. You, you talk about people not knowing about the Indian Act. Now, I, I can guarantee you, most people have never even read the Constitution, let alone the Indian Act. Mm -hmm. So we've got a lot of educating to do, and social media is a great way to do that. Mm -hmm. I know there was a great artist who went to London, and uh, he uh, did this uh, installation where he put the Indian Act up on the wall took a shotgun and shot it. I Lawrence thought that was fantastic. Oh, is that Lawrence Paul? <laughs> yeah, full of bullet holes. Mm -hmm. um, which may be fitting or not, you know, it's a statement, definitely. Mm -hmm. Well, it's one of the most, it is the most colonialist act in, in yeah. the Western world yeah. that, that is still alive today, and it's all because there's a reluctance by the government to actually honor the existing treaties or its constitution or its Supreme Court decisions. And so, you know, it's a big fight. And what's mm -hmm. going on right now is massive because it is the genocide or the ethnocide of indigenous title and rights to the mm -hmm. land and the resources because that's the game plan. And the honor for the land and the resources. Well, they're going to devastate it under the, under the yeah. existing uh, free trade agreements they're working on. And so mm -hmm. really, unlike the 60s or the 80s or even the movements that we've had in the past, now we've got the artists on side who are able to tap into technology and get the message out and build friends and alliances. Yeah, and it's known all over the world, by the way. And it's all over the world. All these connections. Yeah. So yeah, it's a real powerful world movement. And mm -hmm. I'm so glad that it started here on this continent um, for various reasons. You know, I, I, well, we all know that uh, the native people were not treated, native people, the indigenous peoples were not treated very well mm -hmm. by the colonizers. And uh, they're recognizing that now, uh, with a few exceptions, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was, I was appalled actually by, um, by the appearance of our prime minister when he came to Vancouver and uh, started talking as if the beginnings of North America were with the arrival of Columbus, there was no recognition of native peoples at all. Mm -hmm. Whereas in Vancouver, it's traditional to recognize that this is unceded territory mm -hmm. and it's still under stewardship of the people who have been looking after it for thousands of years and we should That's look right. up to them and learn from them and not just walk over all over them. But we're coming towards the end of the show, so I just have one more question. Uh, how do we find out what you're doing next? Well actually social media yeah. I've actually um, like Scott I'm still really learning how to use social media but I've been I have lots of nieces and nephews teaching me how to how to operate it um, but I've been using Facebook and Twitter to just put out messages to people to let them know when I get information about uh, rallies that are happening or teach-ins I think that's a really great yeah. next step that's happening mm -hmm. really take my hat off to people who are organizing those teach-ins is where people teach each other well it's an opportunity for people to come together and learn yeah. more about these issues and so like and, a free school everybody's got something to contribute yeah there are free gatherings yeah. that, that get hosted by different uh, organizations mm -hmm. in the community and different groups and mm -hmm. as artists we're starting to talk about what we can do to bring people together and just make them aware especially if the democratic process and making sure people are aware that you know part of this is about democracy as well yes and real exercising democracy. real democracy yeah not not 
little parties. Yeah, not the appearance of democracy. People, democracy, right? yes. yes. Right. Yeah, and that, that's a good point because uh, how do we channel the energy of Idle No More from that's out there all across Canada, but especially right now for us here in BC, how do we take that energy and channel it into something that advances the movement? And so here we have a provincial election coming up in short order. I've had a chance to talk to a number of the, the youth who are doing the teachings, and now they're saying this is something that we can actually work around. Because in the last provincial election, we had less than 50% of people that actually voted. we got to get more voters. So out. the young people are saying we're going to do teachings, we're going to get this information out there in the circles, and start mobilizing those people, and let's do I don't know more, let's rock the polls, right? Let's, let's get out there and vote. Okay, well, let's finish with that, and yeah. let's all come out and vote next time, and definitely join the I don't know more movement, uh, for the better 